Hi everybody, this is Lauren with Leatherati.com and uh, I'm really privileged to be here tonight with a very talented director, Mr. Mike Skiff. Hi Mike, how are you tonight? Alright Lauren, how are you doing? I'm well, thank you. So, we've got a new project out there that's getting some amazing reviews. Folsom Forever. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm very excited that it's going to be out and released now because it did the film festival uh, circuit this last year. And if people didn't get to see it at that time, you know, I've been hoping that it would get out into the public and people wanted to know how to. And so now it's going to be out on uh, DVD and video on demand. So this is following on the heels of your very successful King Crusaders, which was an amazing documentary uh, about you. the International Mr. Leather mm -hmm. title holder. Thank you title contest thing <laughs> <laughs> so tell us what was the impetus for getting involved in in, in, in Folsom Street Fair because that, that's what that's what Folsom Forever is about is about, about Folsom Street Fair correct uh yeah yeah uh, I, but for me I, I I have to say I saw it through the eyes of when I was a young Leatherman in Phoenix in the mm -hmm. late 70s and how San Francisco and Folsom was the mecca of the leather scene. True. I think especially because Drummer got that out to, that's what people saw yes. was that. Right. And so I didn't think, didn't seem like there was any real video representation of what that community was about. And so how it was that that community would you know the queering of the south of market neighborhood and how that would give spawn to this uh street fair became um something very exciting to be able to talk about because Folsom Street Fair started in 82 84 84 right in there yeah I knew it was somewhere in there yeah so it uh living in Phoenix you heard about this amazing fair it was going on in San Francisco. Well, no, seemed... this was, uh, uh, I think, a little bit after that. Um, th I hadn't heard about the fair. This was pr even prior, so I'm okay. talking about just, you know, I just knew about, you know, like Jack Rich, who talks about the <laughs> hot, sweaty, you know, time that was going on right. there. And, that you know, I wanted to get there at some point. And interestingly, I did go to... Um, what the documentary doesn't go into, and if I can for a moment talk about the, the uh, role that Tony de Blas played in changing the identity of the street fair from really the neighborhood event um, that it was into what it's become, the, the Leather Kink uh, representation. And that's because um, he took the drummer Mr. Drummer Contest and moved it to the Saturday before the street fair. And that way was able to help create Leather Week, Leather Pride Week in San right. Francisco, and then create this, you know, you have the contest. People were coming in for the, you know, from other places for the contest to see that. And then the next day where there was a uh, street fair. In 89, 88, I believe, I was part of someone's fantasy sequence wow. in um, the Mr. Drummer Contest. Right. Uh, Ron Brewer was his name. And um, I remember just like the next day there was a street fair going on. I didn't know what it would become. And it certainly was not like so dense like it is today with people. Um, but I certainly met somebody who was a very help, like shaped me with a lot of uh, kink uh, of my own identity that I developed then over the next, you know, many years. So 89, 88, 89 was really the first time you attended the fair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it has grown. How many people attend the fair now? It's it's huge. Oh, God. Is it like, uh, they, I think 200,000 it's enormous. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's fun too. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's changed. Uh, I mean, the outright explicit kinkiness, um, the outright sex, has been you know kind of, it's kind of been washed out, you know, because this is a public event. 
and nudity is okay, but, you know, uh, other than flogging somebody or, you know, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> doing uh, something like that, but in sort of sex, blowjobs, stuff like that, you know, you're less likely to see these days. It's kind of all gotten tamed down a little bit. Yeah. 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 So is that, how, how else has Folsom changed over the years, do you think? I do think that its charity work has diversified greatly. People don't really think, I think, when they go through those gates, the money that they give over, what that then goes on to uh, do to help the community in San Francisco for different agencies that uh, you know need donations. And so... Um, they, they, raise, they raise a ton of money, too. They do raise a ton of money. And it used to be for really AIDS causes. And nowadays, because, you know, uh, things have changed uh, with AIDS, that they're now able to, you know, have wrestling teams, uh, youth wrestling teams that they donate to and different things like that. Mm -hmm. So that's exciting. Now, what is the, uh, you know, what's the focus of the film? I know there's a ton of stuff that you could talk about with Folsom Forever. You could talk about the kink and the history and how it's morphed over the years and how it's, you know, the vanilla people that attend it and stuff. But what was the focus that you went after for it? Um, there was uh, an essay on um, Folsom's website, uh, Folsom Street Events website, uh, that really looked at the research people like uh, Gail Rubin had done to give, you know, the, the explanation for how the fair came to be. So I took that um, and used what I could when I found things that were I could get from actual interviews or archival images and so putting that together. So, because it, it's funny, there's what I would have liked to have done and there's what I could do because um, there didn't seem to be much that existed during the the neighborhood days of right. the Folsom Street Fair from 84 to like 90 I couldn't find much of anything but then once it became you know the more the kink event I could find representations in from that and then from there it kind of didn't change much except for Probably the the amount of looky loo factor, right? <laughs> Which has always been an issue, yeah, yeah, for as long as I've been going. So yeah. it's been fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. I was I was just, of course, remarking. Well, you probably should have teamed up with that. Uh, there's a, a, a right wing guy who goes every year and takes about a hundred thousand photos every year, and then publishes them all over his website to show the uh, the sodomites in, uh, in you know in, in in San Francisco by the bay and stuff, and how we're destroying the world and stuff. You could have gotten a lot of photos from him, probably. Well, no, that is actually a section of the documentary uh, that looks at how the uh, poster that was the Last Supper poster... Oh, controversial. Yeah, and it's got a segment from um, the Hannity and Combs show on Fox and uh, Sean Hannity ranting about how this is a sacrilege and such. Yeah. And then from there they start, yeah, showing explicit photos and things like that. Yeah. You know, the way they get away with that Shock all the there. people. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. What was the most interesting thing that you, uh, that you unearthed in this process? The part that I found myself so enjoying was I went up to San Francisco and went to the gay and lesbian um, archives up there. And looked at what they had just on video on uh, um, at random and trying to find different things that might like relate to my story but that in and of themselves they just like who the fuck who the fuck uh, so I ended up finding something where Kathleen Cannell the founder co-founder and Mr. Marcus are presenting at the Cable Car Awards right. together and this was a way that I was able to get her on there oh, that's but funny. then there was like to come across um, uh, Harvey Milk and his talking about at the second Castro Street Fair um, and what it uh, and what it meant to him to get this going which uh, the founders of the uh, Folsom Street Fair look to the Castro Street Fair as they created what they were doing. So that was not, and so that's part of the documentary. There's this part that's just um, uh, 
from a video advertising, um, uh, you know, a, a video about uh, San Francisco men and what they do sexually. It was one of these things where over a weekend in like 80, 81, you just had a bunch of guys get together in a warehouse with swords, you know, bananas, fists, everything. <laughs> and then they've got made an ad out of this and it sounds That's so funny. raunchy and sleazy. So all these things felt like such nice gems to uh, come across for me. That's amazing. That's yeah. amazing. Did you touch on Dory Alley at all during the, the, pro the project? I'm not allowed to talk about that one. <laughs> Is that my hardball question I get to ask? Uh, that's you? your, that's your, okay, that one can be your uh, hardball. All right. uh, you know, um, it's just that they like to keep that, the neighborhood street fair. Right. And so they put a lot of marketing into the Folsom Street Fair and they really, you know, just advertise locally for sure for that and you know i think that that's a fair that's representation fair. Yeah. to say well i'll tell you what i appreciate is seeing someone from the community like yourself producing documentaries about our community rather than someone else doing it someone from outside our community because you have a you know what we're about and you know you know the right treatment to give to give these things i mean you know the king crusaders was it was incredible uh, you know, Folsom Forever is incredible. Uh, the treatment you give to it is very sensitive uh, and thorough and knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate that. It's nice to have that sort of hometown advantage. Mm -hmm. Now, this, this is your second leather documentary. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have something else in the pipeline that you can talk about? Or are you contemplating something else? Uh, well, there's one that um, I'm very much interested in. And I would say that it's been in the works. Um, about uh, uh, I'm kind of like looking at how I'm approaching this by actually cities and so King Crusaders with Chicago Wholesome Forever San Francisco I'm thinking this time Los Angeles and the 1976 uh, LAPD raid of oh, the drummer the, slave oh, the slave style. auction and, yeah yeah and so and using that as a way to open up how the, in some ways, the gay community doesn't, didn't look like it did today. And so how that reverberated within the, the gay community is it was trying to mainstream right. at that point. That's to me something interesting. And I also, you know, uh, and possibly would do New York through, uh, to making the movie Cruising because that would be a nice opportunity to bring together sure. my love of film. and uh, But I see these as moments as ways of telling about what that time was was like, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I was able to see, you know, some of that because I just happened to have gotten started young in life, you know, but so <laughs> I was able to see in yeah. 79, 80, you know, get what, the, you know, what that, I had an awareness, a leather awareness of that time. So and now I'm able to, you know, rely upon that um, to, to explore ways I think that people haven't seen the leather community. So leather and kink and BDSM and all that stuff is very mainstream now. It's very popular, mm -hmm. and not just not solely because of Fifty Shades of Grey, but obviously mm -hmm. that's a big, a big influence on it. But you know, Kink.com is in San Francisco, yeah. which has an international reach. I mean, it's, it's you know, it's, it's very popular yeah, right now. Recon, recon is very popular right now to be mm -hmm. kinky. How do you think that's affected the uh, the leather kink community? I think that it's um, made especially people who have been in the community for much of their life feel that um, I think that it's become a diluted scene um, that it's um, it just too much influx maybe has happened to where the integrity maybe has feels like it's broken down what the organizations are um, it, it's those things have changed, um, and yeah. social media has changed things as well. Um, so I think dealing with that, 
Um, it's kind of like, you know, back in the day when there wasn't, you couldn't go to public, there wasn't school to learn how to do really literacy and such like that. Right. The people who did it were like the expert people who wrote right. these incredible letters. And then once everybody could do it, like who writes letters and every letter is dumbed down. Right. <laughs> you know? yeah, true. So, I mean, that's my shorthand thing of, I think, the fear of, for the leather community of um, this uh, expansion. And then I also think that it has to do with that where we are, like certainly in this country politically, and you know, I'm just of the mind or fear that pendulums swing mm. and that what is open right now may not be so open in our future. Um, and those who really have felt this as part of their identity and understand why it is, you know, just a way of life, that they um, they would continue while the others who were the Fifty Shades of Grey would probably, you know, go back to, you know, adopting whatever socially acceptable right. identities, you know, were popular at that time. So I'll ask you the question I ask a lot of my interview subjects. Mm -hmm. if you my could... pin number? No. <laughs> well, I'd like to know that. Though. <laughs> if you could change one thing about the leather community, what would you change? I wish I could give the answer to, you know, at this moment. I guess there's part of me that probably is the aspect that might be guarded. Um, some, I, you know what? I wish, wish I could change, actually is how the leather community is perceived within the greater LGBT mm -hmm. community is what I would really like to see changed. That they, that the greater community understood what the leather community has brought um, and how much uh, it's culturally enriched the overall scene um, has been there for people you know, in ways that you wouldn't think you know, of because it gave people a place to fit and mm. understand themselves better and to do something where they were otherwise just kind of maybe misfits who didn't understand and were, you know, you know so um, there's the talk about how it is with mainstreaming the loss of the radical edge to the community. Sure. Um, and then, yeah, that's something that I do get. Yeah, you know, no, that's definitely that. happening for sure. Yeah. So, what are the next steps with uh, with uh, Folsom Forever? Um, it gets it gets dropped. <laughs> it gets released uh, on June 9th, Tuesday, um, on video on demand, uh, which would include iTunes and Amazon. Wow. Xbox. And uh, there's another one listed, or else also on DVD. That's huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the distributor has done an incredible job in outreach with the documentary, and I think they appreciate and and it does enjoy the fact that right now Kink is showing you know in this fun True. way in the more mainstream culture so it's benefiting right now i'll say by that you yeah. know i never hadn't thought of that but yes wholesome forever is going to benefit um and reach probably even a little bit more diverse audience because um these outlets these people will be more receptive to mm. this checking that's it awesome out. congratulations yeah. thank you is there any any, uh, any last minute things you want to say before we close the interview? Uh, no, I appreciate through the years um, Literati's support of my projects. Um, it's been really wonderful to you know work within our community, as you say, and that this has been the way I can give back. I haven't been. I, I'm like Groucho Marx. I wouldn't want to be a member of any club that would want me as a member. <laughs> <laughs> and so I haven't been part of clubs, but I really think I have one of the largest video archives of leather competitions that there is, mm. representat representations of leather uh, life for many, many years. I think I have an 
incredible. Oh, you've been collection. filming for years. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 So I'm grateful to be part of then, I guess, the archiving of who we are. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Mike, thank you so much for taking the time. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. On well, June 9th, I'm going to have a party, a big, like, a big release party. So it'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> All right. Thank you.